I'm Suzanne Brockman, author of Out of Body. I'm Jason T. Gaffney. And I'm Kevin Held. You're watching Author's Voice. everyone and welcome to Author's Voice, connecting authors to the world. This is Sonali Dev and you are watching Lit With Love. And we have with us today the very amazing, the extremely talented and the Lifetime Achievement Award winning uh, Suzanne Brockman. Hello. Thank you so much nice for to be here. being here, Suzanne. And um, as you can tell, this is the first time uh, on Lit With Love that we have more than one guest. Uh, we have three guests and uh, our surprise guests for today that I am incredibly excited about um, are Jason T. Gaffney, um, Suzanne's son and collaborator on this book. Oh, by the way, we're going to be discussing Out of Body today, uh, which is a novelization um, of a script. And uh, we're going to talk some more about that. And um, the other, <laughs> the co-star, Jason's co-star, Kevin Held is also here, and they, they're also the two who have read the Out of Body audiobook. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So there's this, this tremendous, um, exciting collaborative process going on along with just uh, the book. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs> Before I go any further, um, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, you can type in questions into the comments if you're watching it. Um, on authorsvoice.net. You can use the button to send in questions. Um, Suzanne um, and Jason and Kevin will answer questions live. Also remember that the book is available for $8.99. And you can order it even if you're watching the show uh, recorded after from authorsvoice.net. All right, so let's uh, start with Suzanne telling us a little bit about the book. And then we'll go from there. OK, sure. Okay. Yeah. So actually, um, the book started as a screenplay idea that Jason was working on oh, quite some time ago. And, um, and I sat in through Skype on a table read of uh, the first draft of the script. And um, Jason was writing it for himself and for Kevin to play the two main characters, Henry and Malcolm. And, um, and as I was watching the table read, I, um, uh, I, I suddenly saw the revisions that would need to be made into to, to make this um, into a really fantastic romantic comedy. Now, Jason had written it as a romantic comedy with a real emphasis on the comedy. And with my years of, um, of romance writing, I, I suddenly knew exactly what needed to be done to, um, to turn it into a really romantic story that was also very funny. And I, I asked Jason for permission to, um, to revise his script. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. <laughs> and I said, now wait a minute, let me make it really clear. I'm not just talking about changing a few words here and there. I'm talking about um, a full machete revision. Chop it up into teeny tiny pieces and, and, and kind of start over. Take these two characters, really build them into something. I think, Kevin, I think your character started out as, as a plumber. Yeah, yeah. And, and, wow. and you were like, can I not be a plumber? Right. And, and I'm like, why, dude, they make so much money. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I but plumber, copy editor, money, <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Yeah, so, so we changed him into a copy editor. And, um, and Jason's character was a photographer. And I really liked the whole idea of these two men who were going to have this um, blossoming romance where one is so focused on words and the other is a very visual person. And I, I, so, so that really appealed to me. So I, took, so I did a rewrite of the script, and Jason really liked it. Yeah, it was good. It's, it's really was, good. It is and, really, really good. And, and before I you. You know, even wanted to hand that off to you, I think I, I was thinking of one word um, for the book, and it would be utterly delightful. Huh. And I say that about so many books, but it is just delightful. Um, putting it down was hard. Oh, thank so, you. So delightful. I'm glad to Go hear on. That. So OK, so then we had a script, and we did another table read. And, um, and really kind of liked the way it was going. But of course, it was too long, because I always write long. And so we've been you know, whittling it down. And we finally got something that um, Ed still thinks it's too long. But um, <laughs> we finally got something that we really liked. And, um, and I said to Jace, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to write a novelization, because it's really clear in my head how this would work as a, as a romance mm -hmm. novel. 
And, um, and because, because I had such a clear vision of the two actors who are gonna be playing Henry and Malcolm in the movie, um, it was it was so much fun to write the book from two different per first person point of view. So we so so you talk about voice. So so Malcolm's voice is Kevin's voice in my head, and I can hear him. You know, I can hear him reading that. And so writing it was just it was like, oh, Kevin is gonna kill saying this. Same thing with Jason as Henry. And um, and so once we had once I wrote the novelization, um, we then sold the audio rights to Blackstone audio who's coming out with an audio edition with Kevin and Jason as the narrators. So um, so they just went into the studio rather recently for, and, and read the read the book. It was a kind of we'll have to get their uh, get their take on that. that but that was wonderful because in, in the listening experience of the audio book you're going to hear two voices instead of the traditional one mm -hmm. narrator of a, of a book. So mm -hmm. I'm reading Malcolm's first person when 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 the point of view is Malcolm's then it's me reading it, and when it's uh, Henry's, it's Jason reading it, which but is great. But the twist is that you read all of Malcolm's dialogue, even if it's in Henry's scene, yes. and Henry reads all of um, wow. Henry, and Jason reads all of Henry's dialogue. Kind of like a when, radio show. Right, yeah, so, right. so the like conversations a, are going to be really, they're going to really be sharp and, and funny and really cool. So it's going to be, it's going to be a wow, yeah. really cool I've version never, of the audiobook. Yeah. I've never heard that before. I mean, I'm, yeah, so we're pushing it. It's becoming a little more common, especially with like man-woman voice, to do them separately mm -hmm. in yes, books. Yes. Um, but this is this is more like a more like a teleplay. Or we used to have radio mm -hmm. plays yeah. when yeah. we were yes. younger. Yeah. And the experience wow. of recording it was really fun too, because we had to have a studio where we could all be integrated, and there we could each individually be in a single studio right. with a producer. Um, you know, both we're both reading it, and when he's reading the narration, then I'll jump in with the line and vice versa. But we're listening to each other the whole time, so it's pretty interactive. Like it's it's actually live. Well, the, the way you'll hear it. It was wild. We, you can hear, like, so I'm sitting there waiting to say the dialogue while he's reading the narration, and, you just, and it's, you're trying to, like, time it out and feel them when, like, I'm in the little box and I can't see anyone, and it's just, but you get into that rhythm finally, and then, I mean, by, by the middle of day one, we were going at a quick pace. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, and also, because you will be playing these characters in the film, it's almost like you started your research and your rehearsals yeah, completely. early, right? Completely. So, yeah. Well, it's as, wow. as an actor, too, because I've only ever, I've never done a novel, well, I've never done an audiobook before, but also I've never done a novelization of a film that I'm in. So, and I've certainly never done it before we even filmed it. Uh, yeah. So it's incredible research, you know, because I have the I have an entire novel of backstory for the character, and then actually got to you know read it first. And, and that okay, so so as a writer, that's the difference between a novel and right. a screenplay. In the screenplay, it's going to be on these two guys to um, to emote and to tell us and show us what they're right. feeling, rather than getting into their heads with introspection. As, as novelists, right. what we do is we share what the character is thinking, right. and, and little details, and we can right. really and, and get into their point of view. But in a movie, there's no time for that. So um, Yeah, there's no voice of God. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Unless you do the whole thing voiceover, which would be yeah. really in it. And it, could, it uh, yeah. We could probably make that work, Mommy. An entire probably. movie in voiceover? Yeah. Sure, yeah. You know, that's, that's a great it idea for yeah. a future project. I know. It, <laughs> it's it, like a silent yeah. film with yeah. voiceover, yeah. just right. not silent. Yeah. But, yeah. but do, do you guys have um, a favorite part when you read it? Like what was, because as I was reading it, I was thinking, you know, oh my gosh, I love this part. So did you have favorite parts? The sex scene, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Right. Like, and that was a pretty um, unspicy sex scene, considering some of the sex scenes that, that we, we ride. Yeah. I, I, wow, my experience of it was very different because uh, Unspicy in terms of I don't know you, you don't exactly you don't get graphic but um, I remember when when I was reading that part uh, it was like I was in a tunnel everything was else was gone because it might not be graphic it's but it's very yeah. important mm -hmm. and it's very mm -hmm. emotional and so that was wonder I mean the experience of reading it was great because like it's like some things can go by the wayside you know you're talking about this or that. But that is so important for both characters, and, and it was so important to get the flow of it because yes. it's, you know, so, so I didn't want to have to stop ever. So I did my best to, like, just keep, so I had no to be laser intended. focused with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you didn't ever want to stop. Well, what was fun? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt us. <laughs> <laughs> what was fun about that moment is actually he did that, I think, that entire section in one take, which was amazing. 
But then, of course, we get to the section where there's a little bit of dialogue between them. And I didn't come in because I was, I was suddenly listening to a book. I was like, I was so happy. I was just like, I know. And, and so I'm sure they have a recording somewhere of me going, oh, shoot. That's me. And he's like, and the, the director's like, no worries. And they right. click a little like, go back three seconds. And then I think we should keep it in. It would be uh, Henry looks yeah. lovingly up and he said, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I have to say um, about the sex scene, there's something incredibly clever in there. Mm -hmm. There's you. something, uh, you know, which I'm not going to give away, but, um, but every time I read a paranormal novel, you know, especially about telekinetics and, you know, those types of uh, beings, I'm always struck by how people don't use what you've used in this more. Okay. And there's this very particular uh, part of, a sex scene that is incredibly important, I think, in day-to-day -day sex, mm -hmm. too, that, that you brought up because of this, this ghost element. And it, it's just insanely clever. Oh, thank you. It's, it was fun to write. Now, now, see, one of the most important things with any book is that you have to stay within the, the, the world that you've created, mm -hmm. whether it's whatever, in, in, right. including. So this is, a, this is a paranormal, but it's also contemporary. So it's kind of, if you think of it like um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. So it's, so it's our, our regular world, but there are these para right. weird paranormal elements that, that surprise most people because they're not expecting it. And, um, and so yes, yeah, so, so establishing the rules and then having the love scene happen According to those rules, um, that was that was really important to me, and it's going to be. It was a chance to be able to write that scene um, with with detail that we may not be able to to share in the movie. We're just going to have to, you know. Yeah. You're going uh, to need voice of God voiceover yeah, because you just, cannot. It, but that people will just have to. So here's the thing. So if you, if you if you when you see the movie, if you love the movie, you're going to love the book, and then you're going to really love the audio book. I think I think yeah. that, um, that yes. the having all three is going to be such a lot of fun to be able to present to the. Well, and another public. another fun thing about getting to read the audio book is that I'm directing this film as well, and while I'm listening and hearing what Kevin's coming up with, it it's get, giving me ideas for motivation of where the characters will be standing, how far apart are they, how close are they, what. It, would someone be touching someone's knee? Would someone be touching someone's back? Like, would they be crossing their arm and all that stuff? And getting to hear, hear the the kind of backstory and everything makes it that much easier to, when it, right. to plan it out and map it out. Right. And as you're saying that, there's actually a scene where they're walking each other through physicality of you know getting someone to go out with you, which again is absolutely adorable, but there is a lot of that, you know, now what do I do with my arms sort right. of thing, which is, oh, yeah. which is something we all have wondered at some point in our life, right? What do you do with your arms in this situation, right. even if it's just entering a room or getting on a stage mm -hmm. to give a spectacular speech? I'm going to segue. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did want to say, um, now I, am I looking? OK. Hi. Um, Suzanne did this barn burner speech at the RWA National Conference in Denver. Uh, that was um, not a dry eye in the house. Uh, it was very um, personally um, touching and powerful to me um, and to a lot of other authors who may not be mainstream in every way. But it was really a barn burner. There's like no other word for it. And I want you to talk about life after just a little bit. Um. Life after. Well, you know, right after it was it was surprisingly noisy. Well, there, because we we went into it. Um, Jason introduced me, and yes, and um, and I chose that. I I asked if he could because I really wanted to. Um, I really wanted to uh, let people see the. Because I can talk about um, I can talk about LGBTQ rights, um, but but what I want to do is I want to show people. An example, like my son. This, I'm not just talking about. I'm going to make it personal. I want to personalize yes. the story. So, so by having Jason um, give my introduction and showing, particularly showing baby pictures of him, that was something that I have like, like, okay, discriminate against this adorable little child. Like, I dare you. And and um, and so, so that having that lead into the the some, somewhat um, and perhaps um, some people have described them as harsh words. Um, um, that I, when I spoke my truth um, in, in that speech, um, 
I wanted, I, I just wanted to, to make sure people knew how deeply personal this story was for me. Um, and so, um, and we went into it not really not knowing how anybody was gonna respond. And uh, I practiced the speech um, so many times, I practiced it like weeping. And you, I, know, I know that you have um, had the experience <laughs> of having to give a speech through tears. Um, and it's a hard thing to do to keep going, isn't it? Yeah. And um, so I practiced, 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 and um, I practiced, I practiced, I had a list, a page of um, heckler responses, because I really didn't know, would I, would I be heckled? Wow. Would somebody, I just didn't know, would everybody walk out? Would I, would I be met with a stony silence and um, and have to have to continue the speech like Stephen Colbert at the correspondence dinner with the sweat dripping down his face? I I mean I he's one of my heroes and I like watching that is, is a is a lesson in how to um, keep going um, and so I think if you watch the video of the speech you can see in my eyes the. I think it was the, the second standing ovation when <laughs> when I realized oh. I, they're not going to cut my mic. <laughs> I'm not going to be dragged off the stage. And 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 after that, after after doing this and giving this speech and saying saying these words, I felt it was so important to say. I was being given this platform. Um, I am very unhappy with um, a lot of what's with most of what's going on in this country right now. Um, and I had a lot to say about um, about romance publishing and the um, and the. Uh, the, the foundation of our entire country, which is based on white supremacy, and we, even if we even if we pretend that it's not, it is there. White male heterosexual supremacy, and and um, so so saying that was important. Um, and then the the huge response that came from people who um, who who rose up and. Um, and spoke out too, and and basically said, "I'm with her, and and we need to talk about this. We need to talk about these things exactly." This. So it was, um, it's it's been, you know, it's been really kind of weird. I have a, I kind of went back from Denver to um, a friend going into hospice, yeah. and that was really hard, and um, and it really, you know, it, it puts things into perspective yeah. in your own life when you're saying goodbye to somebody, and. Um, and so, so my focus since Denver has really been on that, and and then on the release of Analysis Paralysis, which has been joy in, in this mix of joy and grief that, that's mm -hmm. been going on in my life. Um, um, but it's um, you know it's 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 I think it's really gratifying that the RWA had a had a re-election of um, board members and many many who who chose me for to give the speech that was a, it's a little controversy there um, got re-elected and uh, and I'm, I, that was. So that was really great to see that that people are are hopefully now the conversation will continue and people yeah. will be allowed to speak up and and and, ad and address this because we really do have to we talk have about to. it. Yes, and and I think I mean I, I I keep thinking about the gratification of all that you have been through in this long long career, and all that you've tried to say and to come to a point where you get a double standing ovation in a crowd like that with that speech. It, there's got to be. A, Kind of, uh, also yes, yes. And, you know, so well, well, yes, but so we mm. have to breathe and take that in too. Is that there has been distance walked, and you know yes. that you have walked it alone for a while, and now it may not be and so. No, I've alone. I've walked it with people beside well, also, me. Also, there's yes. many, yeah, but, many. Yeah. But, oh, but a yeah. lot of times, a lot of times, the people who've been walking beside me have been invisible to other people. Yes. and yeah. I think it's really important, really important that we do not erase people from our. America is so great Preaching. because yes. of the diversity and because of the of, of the inclusion because of the, the, the amazing ideas and colors and spices and art and all this thing all these things that we get because yeah. because we are we get to we get to talk to one another and 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 um, and, and learn from each other yep. and yep. so yeah yes so well I yeah it was it, it was a fabulous moment and I'm glad um, that it happened and speaking of which one of um, one of my favorite lines in the book is um, is when he says, gay man, I know all about eye contact, right? And uh, there is something in that line which for me uh, spoke to why own voices and why voices are so important, mm -hmm. right? Because, um, because that is not something anyone who has not had that experience can come up with. Right, unless they have read and known yeah, and been in so, um, yeah. so so 
where did like where, where does that line come from? I just I, it, it, well, having a gay I son, being a, the mother I, of a gay son since well. How old are you? You're and and um, <laughs> and you know knowing and seeing him, seeing him as this little baby, little a baby gay, and <laughs> and, um, and turning into this wonderful, wonderful young man. Um, I I think it. I think that as as right. Really, it comes down to this. We as writers, we are are writing about people, and we're always writing about somebody who is not us. Yes. I just tapped my mic. Sorry about that. Um, we so so every time we write a story, we are getting into somebody else's head. We're, we're putting on their shoes. We are we are we're yes. we're we're wearing their we're, we're experiencing experiencing what they experience. And so so we have to do the research that that allows us to know how did how did they grow up? How did their what was their experience? So I I have found that reading um, essays written by people, whether they're Navy SEALs. Why did you decide to become a Navy SEAL? That's a really hard, oh, like, I am, I'm like the anti-Navy SEAL, okay. I, cold water, no. Cold, and no. You know, I mean, like, you know, what, what, what is this? But, and yet, I'm known for writing Navy SEALs. How do I do it? I, I listen. I li it's so much about listening and, and learning about other people and how, and how they live their lives. So here I am, mom of a gay son, and he's, and he's, um, it, he's experiencing what it means to um, to say the words "I'm gay," right? You say right. Yeah, "I'm gay," yeah. and then and then what what happens after that? What what does that mean? How do you how do you how do you fit into the community? And and um, and how do you learn the 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 dance, the rules, the romance, the you know? It's it's yeah. it's and every I mean it's the same thing with. Like men writing stories where where the characters are women, like and and understanding that I'm sorry, we don't walk down a dark street alone in the middle of the night. We're walking in the middle of the road. We check the back seat of our car before we get in, even if we've locked it. You know, all these things that 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 the average white hetero male probably doesn't doesn't realize. And 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 no, we do not admire our butts in the mirror after we get. We I kind of do that do sometimes. Do that? Actually, we just <laughs> check to make. Sure our underpants aren't showing. It's just, but it's not. It's not this like. Oh, I'm looking particularly no, but, bosomy today. But, well, yeah, like, but I do. I do believe but, every woman should admire her. But in the and man. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But but it's but but this but there's, but I know there's what a, you mean, this yes. kind of misperception of, of what of what it is yes. like to yes. to walk in the shoes of a woman and and so so as as writers we just want to yeah. like it's all about exploring what does it mean what does it mean how does it feel what do you how how is your life different from mine, and um, and how can I um, write it with with accuracy and, and authenticity? Right. And and so so it's just a matter of diving yeah. in and really reading everything you can read and and listening to to people who, uh, who tell have stories to tell because everyone's. And he was a co collaborator. So I mean, yeah. you know, co -co well, he was a collaborator, and and so there is so much I feel of that also in mm -hmm. this story. That there's, you know, the the, and and here's the other thing, the universal universality, right? So so this story could be the story of anybody anywhere because yeah. that the feelings are so strong and the humor is so strong. Well, it's also and a, yet, uh, sorry, go ahead. Right, and, and yet it is very particularly a story of these two people, yes. which is you know so beautiful. It is, but uh, that's actually it, one of the things that really draws me to the the work that the Susan Chase do, is that um, one of their uh, mission statement basically is that this is a story about gay people but it's not funny because they're gay they're not there's not gay jokes in it there's not it's not the humor and or the romance doesn't come out of an outside looking in oh look at the gay people and what they do it's these are two people and this is their experience and like they are gay but it has nothing to do with their motivation, or it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with the conflict of the story. Use. None right. of the humor yeah. of it, none of the conflict of it, comes from their gay and look at what they do. Well, and I love it. And yet it owns the gayness of it. Oh, of sure, yeah. as, fully, as which it is would, fabulous. Because right. you're, that's right. who you are. Because right. as soon as you make the conflicts about that, there's the, you're not owning it anymore. It's almost like, oh, that's how I think. They I'm do forced it. into right. this box. Yeah. I'm yeah. forced to be this way, yes. or, or anything like that. For example, like a lot of LGBTQ movies and and books to an extent 
they really do, they're, they're, like a, a staple conflict is I'm coming out or I have to go back in the closet because I have to hide myself to this person. Which and is not an untrue story. No, it happens right, all right, the time. Yeah. It's, the arranged, it's right. the arranged marriage story for South Asian authors. It's right. like the only, only story anyone seems to be interested in. Exactly. But more than that. And, yeah. and, but I was just talking, we were just in Palm Springs uh, where we did our, our world premiere of Analysis Paralysis. And um, I was talking to a bunch of the men who live there, the, the older uh, generation of gay men. And a lot of them were, were really grateful that Analysis Paralysis had nothing to do with the fact that we were gay. They just happen to be so gay. It's a love story. Because, a love story. and one of them even mentioned this, coming out is, is, in the grand scheme of your life, a blip. Yeah. It can be a huge blip, and it can be a huge deal, and it's a very personal thing. Right. It has to come when you're ready, and you're ready to be authentic with yourself and everyone else. And, and, and it's done safely, if you're in a, like, <laughs> do it safely. Um, and, but they were really excited to watch what comes after, because most movies, it's that, the coming out is yeah. the final climax of the movie, and then it's like, and now everyone's happy, end of movie. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but what happens after? We have full lives and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you're not boiled down to like singular experiences. No, yes. yeah, that's, I yes. came out when I was 21. How old were you? Uh, 15. Right, so yes. there's a whole rest of your life, and then you're just, an, it, it gay is integrated into everything else, and you yeah. are just, you know, it's, I, I don't, I don't shop gaily, <laughs> but I'm a gay sure? person who goes shopping, you, yeah. you know, and, you know, but You're that's not. Right? <laughs> I mean, maybe I buy a lot of eggplant. <laughs> then you might be Indian or gay. <laughs> <laughs> but but an analysis paralysis, tell us, yes. um, it, it's showing tonight in Chicago, so yes, take us yes, into I that. actually have brought with me the Reeling Chicago um, brochure, um, and yes, and there's the, the our, our movie is, uh, that's screening tonight is called Analysis Paralysis. It's a rom-com. It's a lovely, lovely, hysterically funny rom-com starring these two guys and directed by, it's Jason's directorial debut. Um, but really, Chicago is an iconic LGBTQ film festival. It is, this is its 36th year. And if you think about gay rights in America, and 36 years is a long time for, for an LGBTQ film fest to be up and running. So it is a, an incredible incredible honor to be part of this. We're screening, um, our movie is screening tonight at 9.30 at the Landmark Center Century Theater, Landmark Century Center Theater. I can get, always get those mixed up. Mm -hmm. But um, it's in, we're in theater seven, I believe. But you, you'll, you'll walk in and you'll see the, the rainbow flag and just follow that. Um, but, um, but yeah, there's still tickets available. And um, oh, yes, and we also want to talk about these two guys. Oh, sure have a podcast. Yeah. So the thing about Jason T. Gaffney is that you can't work with him once <laughs> without wanting to work with him all the time. Yeah, I want and to interview him on all my shows. Right, exactly. And the thing about Suzanne <laughs> Brockman is that you can't work on a, a, a project of hers without her uh, folding you into her family. So I'm now a Gaffney, which is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we just couldn't get enough of working together. And so um, you can't do a feature film every week. Yeah. But we do have a podcast that's called The Bright Side with Kevin and Jason. And uh, it's a weekly show where we uh, dig into some tragedy mm -hmm. and then ultimately find what good came out of that tragedy. That's the point of the show. And we make fun of it along the way. Oh, yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. That's great. And we are out of time, but I would be completely uh, not doing my job if I did not ask one, one question uh, of Suzanne as an author. And this is a very much me grinding my own student of writing agenda. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, the most amazing thing to me about your books. And this book definitely is voice. And we often hear how voice is unteachable. Um, having said that, um, and, and I was reading this one line from um, this book to, um, to, Su to Suzanne uh, about um, where, where she compares a woman to granola laced with weed. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant line. <laughs> but, but, but it's so voicey, and all of the book is so uh, flawlessly and so easily voice-driven. Do you have like a single, um, you know, 
thing we can take away. Okay, I, I call it the um, Robert De Niro School of Writing, and um, and it really has to do with with becoming the character of of settling in. Like I said, you're putting on somebody else's shoes, you're you're slipping into their skin, and you're writing from their point of view. Mm -hmm. So it's all about using their words, using their experiences, using what they see. Because we can look around the room, and I will notice things that you will not notice, and vice versa, because of we mm -hmm. we have a different mm -hmm. background um, and a different. And, and different likes and dislikes and just because that's who that's individuality so so as a writer what you want to do is you really have to understand your character's backstory where did they grow up their childhood you're not necessarily going to dump this information mm -hmm. into the page but you want to understand who he is who she is how what he's what he's going to notice and then you write from their point of view, really, as if you are in their body. So, so in Out of Body, it was, it was particularly easy for me because I hear Kevin's voice so clearly in my head as Malcolm. I hear Jason's voice so clear, clearly in my head as Henry. And I was doing the thing, as I mentioned earlier, where, um, where Kevin's character is a, is a wordsmith. He's a, he wants to be a writer. He's a copy editor. He, and, and Jason's character is a photographer. So you have this... This, the, the character who sees things and the character who, who is able to express himself so eloquently and, and to use the wordplay in the, in, the, in, the, in the scenes, in the point of view scenes from Malcolm and, and to yeah. use the visuals. And so, so it's really, like I said, Robert De Niro, you just kind of have to, you, you, you become the character in a way and um, you just don't let anybody like see you because yeah. you, you, know, you don't like <laughs> look like, like the characters, but, but it, it, you, know, you really try to inhabit it and feel it. And, Feel that emotion. I did it again with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> because you're feeling the emotion. Not an actor. These guys are actors. But yeah, I haven't touched my neck once. I know. You're just <laughs> well, show off. <laughs> no, <laughs> no that, that's great. Thank you for that. I did uh, want to get to the two questions that we got from, uh, from oh. viewers. Um, and the first is from Patricia uh, from Facebook. Thanks, Patricia. And she has a question for you, uh, Suze. Uh, and she says, since Out of Body is both a novel and script, can you talk a little bit about the difference between writing a story for the page and for the screen? Yes. It's all about, um, it's all about the visual versus the introspection. So novels, novels, like I had mentioned earlier, novels are a chance to get inside to, of a character's head and, and really explore what he or she is thinking. Um, in a movie, you want to show it. You want to, you want to be able to, there's, okay, so my favorite easy example of, um, of showing in a movie is in um, Gross Point Blank where um, John, What's his name? Cusack. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Is um, he, he, his backstory is explained in a, in like a single like maybe eight second shot of him dumping a bottle of gin oh. on his father's grave. Right? Like we don't like there what it is. What more do you need? Like, yeah. Just yeah. boom. You, you know. And then, you know, and then, know and then exactly. drop and then throwing and then the, the bottle, bottle away on, onto on the it. The trash yeah. on the grave. And right? Isn't that? And that tells you. It's, it's like in a book. We'd be writing pages of of, of, of what Daddy of did. Yes. yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so that's that. I think that's the main difference. Is that you want to go for the for the real visual explanations in a movie and uh, in a novel, you can really take your time. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Thanks, yes. Patricia. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. And uh, and Kathleen Ellen Ford also um, commented on Facebook, and she says hi. So hi, oh, Kath. hi. Hey, Kathleen. <laughs> hi. That's my mother's name. So. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so I have so many more questions, but our producer is kind of dancing from foot to foot now. <laughs> so we're going to have to close, although I do. And we'll want have to come back to <laughs> Chicago, we maybe next year. We'll have to come back, yeah. Yeah. Because, because I want to talk about the whole um, analysis paralysis uh, protagonist who is a young adult author and how all of that works. Oh, yes, yes, but, yes, yes. But we'll we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll have talk to, more. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you so much thank for being you. here. Thank it was you. such yeah. a joy. And Nana Nana Boo Boo, we still get to talk after you're gone. But, <laughs> but thank you for being here. Again, uh, this is Sonali Dev, and you're watching Lit With Love. And I'm going to take us out uh, before I read our outro. Um, make sure you order the book, Out of Body. It is $8.99, and Suzanne will sign those for you. Uh, if you're watching after the show is done on YouTube, you can still order it or on Facebook. Thank you again for being here. And these are our upcoming shows. Uh, we have Stranger Than Fiction, uh, which is October 23rd. And our newest host, Angela Watson, welcome Angela, will be interviewing architectural historian Robert 
Brugman <laughs> about his new book, Art Deco in Chicago, Designing Modern America. That's October 23rd at 1 p.m. On Solved, Libby welcomes author Julie Heise to discuss her latest thriller, Virtual Sabotage, which will scare everyone just in time for Halloween on October 24th at noon. Our next Lit with Love will be November 12th with Sally Kilpatrick. And speaking of Halloween, Out of Body is a romantic ghost story, so please do read it. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Suzanne, Jason, and Kevin. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see you thank next you. time.